Hey, it's Kaylin from Travel Yourself, and here is how oysters come from the farm to the table. Travel Yourself. We take this sewer pipe and uh, we dip it in a light slurry cement and then we uh, let it air dry in the driveway underneath the, uh, the tarp so it doesn't dry too quick. So then at the same time the oysters have uh, developed a gonad inside of them that they express into the water. So boys and girls they don't call hinder for oysters they just like throw it out there right. So that intermixes uh, usually about the first week of July in that area. So about that time, uh, as uh, they grow, they float in the water, about the first four to five feet of water. And uh, that's where all the nice warm water is, all the, most of the plankton's alive. And that's kind of where the ratfish are so light, right? So when science first toes, they'll see it about 90 microns. So then there's a, a phone number that you can call, and they'll tell you how big it is, what the density is for the area that you're you're in. So in my case, it's up in Bitter. It's about an hour from here. So I've got all these in the driveway. Christine and Derek have helped me with it a few times. And uh, what we do is, uh, once these are done, we'll float, we'll go up and we'll raise the lines up and we buoy it. So we get all this floating rope and boots all ready to go. So then, as the week goes on, they're eating and eating and eating and they're developing a little foot. And when they get to about the 15th of July, roughly, then what'll happen is they're about 280 microns. So on the science toes, and they put it on their little reporting service, that it's at 280 microns, density is medium high. Then we load up the trucks, the boat, with three or four hundred of those. We go up and we put them out. Because by the time they hit 320 microns, they're sinking. So as they sink, whatever that foot hits, that's where they attach to. So in this case, they'll attach to themselves, they'll attach to anything that's fairly clean. So with all that nice new cement that's nice and clean, pretty easy, right? So that collector going out might be six pounds. In October, when I come to bring it back in, that collector can weigh up to 60, 60 pounds. And you wouldn't be able to see through the pipe there's that many oysters on the outside and on the inside. So about the end of October, uh, we'll go back up, we'll take off the line, bring them back home here. I get a big tarp to spread in the driveway. Right? Pick it up, big stick, crack. All the little oysters and all the cement comes off, right? So the collectors we can reuse. Those ones are about 30 years old, actually. And uh, so there's no carbon footprint on those. So then what we'll do is we'll put them through this trommel type idea with finer screens and uh, it'll roll them, it'll take all of the shaft out of it, all the pieces of cement, it'll kind of break the little clusters apart. So then we'll pick it up and we'll put it into these bags behind you here. They're a black mesh plastic bag. As you can see they're pretty easy and uh, we'll put about 10 to 12 pounds of material in that bag so going out it'll be about that much material in the bottom of that bag mm -hmm. so then this goes out into what they call a floating cage which is a wire cage with uh, two big floats on it, which we'll show you once I get down there and uh, there'll be four of these in each cage 
Uh, some follows have six. I prefer four. So then they'll sit there in November and they'll kind of heal up from being thrashed and beaten up. So then at the end of November, uh, the water hits four degrees as it's cooling off. The oysters go dormant. They, they stop feeding, they just hibernate, just like a bear. Okay. So then we'll come along and we'll take the caps off the floats and the cage goes down to the bottom for the winter. So, excuse me, they'll sit on the bottom all winter, having a nice little sleep. In the water? In the, on the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, come spring, we'll pick that line back up and pull it right up and then put the caps back on the float and then they float again, right? So then every two weeks after we float, we floated them, we'll turn the cage right upside down so it's resting on the floats and the oysters are out of the water. Mm -hmm. So they air dry. So it kills all the bifouling, which for sure moss and all the little barnacles and stuff you see. It'll, it'll kill that. So I don't have to use any chemicals or anything to control my nuisance species. So therefore it's 150% green. There's no time that I use anything that's noxious. So then that sometime through that year, I'll bring those bags back in. Nice. And, uh, That close to here, in about a year's time, that'll be up to about like there. So anyways, what will happen is they come back in, they'll go through those bigger screens this time, and we'll knock that new growth off, and it kind of rounds them. It teaches them to cup and get thicker shell. So then at that time, they'll go back in through, we put them in on the table, sort through them, make sure there's no clusters, or everything's broke up, and they're all little single oysters. Then we repack those bags back to 10 to 12 pounds. So obviously you're going to need more cages, right? <laughs> so then they'll go back into circulation, uh, back in on the, and then they'll be turned every two weeks as usual. Same thing, come to late November, caps come back off, goes back down. Okay. Same thing again the next year. So on year three, those oysters are now three inches, and we've repacked that a couple times. So now the bag's back down to around 150 pieces. Hopefully, all saleable size oysters. So using this technology, I can get 95% of what I put out back as a saleable product. Now the other way of doing it, which was done on PEI for years, and still does is that seed that was collected would just be shoveled up, put in the trays or tubs, taken out on the lease, and just spread just like wheat on a certain area. So you're gonna put it down, you're gonna come back in about five to seven years instead of three to get the same size product, and you're only gonna get 2% of it back. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a difference. And then the way of harvesting would be a set of tongs, which have gone pretty much anyone that does bottom culture owns tongs. So you're in the boat and you just kind of work these together. That'll come up on the working boards and you sort through. And anything, you got it usually a measure here. Anything that's under three inches goes back because it's illegal size. Anything that's over three inches, you're going to retain. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go to the plant you're going to sell to, or in my case, I ship, so I'll take them to the plant, process them, and then they'll go to whatever market that I have. That way, I'm sure.
see the cement on them for where they're on those little collectors. See the difference from being tumbled and rolled around a bit? Nice little oyster. <laughs> this is the perfect oyster. <laughs> we are now back at the Table Culinary Studio, which is an old converted church. We have our aprons on and we're ready to cook. Often oysters are eaten with mignonettes. These are all made by George. We have an Asian Thai, raspberry mint, lemon and herb, black garlic and moonshine, and no, apple. You have to do it. I... Asian Thai flavor in order to do it. Yeah, I'd be pretty quick with this. See that? Oysters with bacon jam and black garlic cream sauce. Yeah. You've got the herbs and the brightness of the bacon. So good. I'll wipe it This is to get rid of the. Oyster po' boy. Yum. Good afternoon, my name is James Powell. I work here at Raspberry Point Oysters. I've been growing oysters for about 30 years. And this is a nice bit of some beautifully harvested raspberry point. Uh, just harvested today. As you can see, a nice round oyster. Nice deep cup. These are going to be some great oysters when they're ready to go. This is a Raspberry Point oyster. <laughs> Here at Raspberry Point Oysters, they have six of their own types of oysters with different names, and the name depends on the farm that it came from and the size of the oyster. So that's what it looks like. Cool. And you can see how, so there's a top to hold everything together, mm -hmm. but all the oysters are in those two bottom trays. And there's 200 in each. There's 100 in each tray, so 200, 200 in each two, bundle. 200 in each bundle. Yep. Here okay. are 80,000 oysters. Each of those has 7,200 oysters, each of those cages. Wow. What we do once every once every couple of weeks, we'll come and we'll flip one on top of the other. What that does, that gets them out of the water, so the oysters will live for a day or two like this. But all the barnacles and seaweed and mussels that grow on it will die, so that gives you a nice clean oyster. Uh, but in the growing position, they're close to the surface and they can grow really fast and they'll get, they'll get very fast. I'll just show you what one of these look like. Oh yeah, there's a lot of barnacles and things on Lots there. of barnacles and stuff. So if you don't look after that, that kind of gets out of control. Right. But here's how you can tell what, see that little thin layer? Mm -hmm. That's what it's grown this year. Oh. oh, right at the lip of it. Right at the lip, yeah. Oh, look at that. Bins, and you dump into the hopper as 
as they go up, then the next step is to go into the tumbler. This is the tumbler, so this will wash the oysters a little bit, and it will also pick up the salsa. And if you look up inside, there's holes. So when it comes out here, it gets to go through the inspection line. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button.